Hello and welcome to this short video tutorial presenting some of the new features in Rapid Plan 2.14, along with a few tips that will allow you to use the new features efficiently. Uh, before I go into specifics of the new tools, I just want to mention that around 75% of the changes in this release are based on customer requests and feedback that we've received, which we appreciate a lot because it lets us make Rapid Plan the ideal tool for our customers. Okay, let's have a look at the new features. Uh, we'll start with the road corner tool. Um, so here's a typical scenario, a very basic road crossing. Rapid plan order merges the two roads, but by default, all the corners are right angled. So how do we make them rounded using the road corner tool? I'll need my tools palette, and the corner tool is here under the roads category. As you can see, um, it now takes just a few clicks to create a, a perfectly round and symmetric road corner. And then if I select the object, use Control D to make a copy, Control R to rotate, I can easily reuse it for all the other uh, corners of this intersection, which means I have the whole thing covered within seconds. Let's have a closer look at the corner object. Um, it's based on three control points that mark the position and size of the object. And then a single uh, shape point that controls the shape of the curve. Just a quick note uh, here for those of you who are new to Rapid Plan. In order to move the blue points, like the shape points, uh, you need to activate them by pressing the control key. Now, when I'm drawing a new road corner object, my first three clicks uh, position the control points, and then the fourth click uh, positions the shape point. So with these four clicks, I can um, uh, easily create pretty much any type of corner I need inner corners, outer corners, um, all sorts of shapes and sizes. Well, sometimes I might want to trade some of this flexibility for accuracy, um, as is the case when I need a symmetric right-angled corner like the one I drew here. So instead of eyeballing it, I've actually used a built-in feature that automatically snaps the point um, to the right positions. So let's um, go through this step by step. The, the trick is to use uh, a combination of shift and control keys while drawing. I click to position the first control point and then I hold the shift key down on my keyboard and as you can see rapid plan now snaps the second control point at 45 degree intervals. Uh, which makes it very easy to keep my corner side perfectly uh, vertical. And the same thing with the third control point. Holding the shift key, I can ensure my corner is exactly right angled. Uh, now, if I also want the corner to be symmetric in the sense of the two sides having equal length, I can additionally press down the control key. A rapid plan will then snap the point to the exact position required. Of course, to uh, keep the corner perfectly symmetric, we also need to make sure the curve is symmetric too. So again, when positioning the shape point, uh, hold down the shift key um, and note how rapid plan now snaps the point along the corner center line. So there we go. Uh, here's our perfectly symmetric road corner object that I can now use to round off intersection corners. Drawing procedure might feel a bit awkward at first, uh, but after you draw a few corners, you'll quickly pick it up and uh, see just how flexible and powerful this tool is for pretty much every type of corner. Uh, just remember the first three control points mark the corner area, and then the fourth controls the corner shape. And that you can use the shift and control keys uh, whenever you need that extra precision. Uh, here's an example of an angled intersection. Uh, note how I place my control points roughly where the road surface and the shoulder meet. And then after drawing the corner, I usually slightly adjust its position uh, 
to make sure that it fits perfectly. One last example, um, an outer corner, which is just as easy to draw. There we go. So this pretty much covers the road corner tool. Um, let's have a quick look at another addition, the standalone sidewalk. Um, this new tool allows us to draw sidewalks that are independent of roads, but can still merge with them. Um, a typical usage example is uh, when the sidewalk uh, has to go around an obstacle, say a bus stop. Um, I can disable the default um, sidewalk on this road and uh, draw a new one manually. So the sidewalk tool uh, can be found in the tools palette under the infrastructure category. And you just draw it like with any other object by placing the control points. So then some fine adjustment of the uh, control points and the sidewalk is, is ready. Another example, uh, a standalone sidewalk uh, connecting two parallel roads uh, running between the two buildings here. And another diagonal one. Um, note how the standalone sidewalk automatically merges with the road objects. The next tool I'm going to show you is uh, Path Text. Uh, with this tool, you can draw uh, a curved path and specify the text that you want displayed along this path. Uh, one obvious usage for this is naming those meandering roads. Uh, so simply draw your path uh, along the road geometry uh, and then you substitute that default text with the road name you need and you're all set. Um, there's all sorts of other uh, ways you can use this, uh, for example, company logos, um, similar to this one, where text goes around an icon. Um, note the um, alignment options uh, of the path text tool. Um, it allows you to choose between left, right, uh, center, and, and justify. Uh, these are all relative to the whole path. With the first three, your text will get trimmed if it doesn't fit, while Justify will always distribute all your text along the whole path, start to end. Okay, so the next thing we'll be looking at is uh, kind of an advanced feature, but uh, a lot of people will find this useful when editing plans. Um, the feature is called Scale Points, and I'm going, going to show you how it works with these two circles. Normally, uh, when you scale an object, uh, it's basically as if you stretch the whole thing, uh, so including the pen thickness. Note uh, the outline becomes thicker as I enlarge the circle. Uh, this usually isn't a big deal. However, there are, there are times when you'd prefer the width to stay constant. Uh, now, if I happen to scale the circle to a more elliptical shape, uh, I also run into an issue where um, the pen width is, isn't being constant around the whole object. Again, this is because the scaling transformation is applied after the whole thing has already been drawn. Scale point uh, works around these problems. Uh, you can activate it by holding down the control key before you start scaling. And then you just drag the scale handles uh, like you normally would. As you can see, this lets me scale the ellipse to any size and shape while preserving its original stroke width. Obviously, uh, you might ask, uh, what's the point of all this, given how I could have just as well grabbed one of the control points and, and used it to, 
to change the uh, shape of the object. Um, in fact, this is just what scale points does behind the scenes. It adjusts the positions of the object points so that the object can be redrawn over a scale geometry. Um, so since the ellipses only have two control points, they're not a very practical example, but consider these buffer delineators. Um, say that we've decided they should be stretched to cover a, a longer distance. Uh, if I just uh, scale uh, the object horizontal, horizontally, it stretches the whole drawing, uh, making the whole thing ugly, like the cones, the, the hatch fill uh, on the buffer area, and, and so on. Um, I could manually move the control points, but this means I have to move all of them individually, uh, eyeballing everything into place uh, so it's still straight. Uh, obviously, uh, the more control points, the more work I, I have with this. Uh, using the scale points feature is a lot easier. Hold down the control key on your keyboard, start scaling, and uh, I can easily make this thing longer without breaking the way it looks. Uh, also, note how, th how this preserved the cone's size and spacing. Uh, it automatically knew that it had to use more cones to cover the longer distance. Um, one more practical example, a two-lane road with an additional turn lane on either side when approaching an intersection. Um, I've drawn these uh, using the turn lane tool, but then I realized they're too narrow and I want to make them as wide as the uh, two middle lanes. So regular scaling won't work in this case. If I do scale, I can make the lane wider but note how uh, my shoulder and sidewalk no longer match after I stretched. That's because I've stretched the whole drawing. Um, and again, I could uh, individually edit the width points of the turn lane instead of scaling. Uh, but then scale points is, is even better and faster as it will do it for me automatically. So here we go. Press down the control key and then I just stretch. And it scaled my turn lane without breaking the, the width of the um, shoulder and the sidewalk here. Okay, uh, before wrapping up this tutorial, I'll also mention a new feature we've added to the print options, which is uh, the ability to specify a watermark image to be used when printing or exporting your rapid plan diagrams. Um, people used to manually add company logos and watermarks to their plans. Um, now this is built in uh, into print options. You need to um, click Edit Watermark Settings to expand this section, uh, and you see the new options here. Uh, you'll first need to import an image file you want to use. I already have one here, and it's our Invariant Company logo. Then you need to check Print Watermark, um, and um, adjust the options as required. Position, scaling, alignment, and uh, opacity are all adjustable. Um, so I can have this as a small watermark somewhere in the corner, uh, or I can have it stretched over the whole page, or even tiled. Um, yeah. So when you're done adjusting all these options, hit save. And from now on, all your plans will automatically have the watermark added when they're printed or exported. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Um, for a full list of changes in Rapid Plan 2.14, uh, please visit the website listed here. Um, and as always, you're more than welcome to send us your comments on our new release or stuff you'd like to see added to Rapid Plan in the future. Uh, please email our technical support team. Their email address is support at invariant.com. Your feedback can make RapidPlan even better.